Hi, I'm Erica with AccuQuilt, and I'm here today to show you how to put together our Rick Rack Flower Quilt. It's hanging behind me here, made with some gorgeous fabrics from Timeless Treasures. Uh, the flowers on there are actually made with our fun flower die and would be great for using charm pack squares. So that would give you some nice variety like you see behind us. If you look closely on it, you would see that these are done and finished off with machine embroidery. Now the machine embroidery that we've used is digitized by Marjorie Busby, and we do have that available both on a CD and also as a download on our website. So let's get started on how to put together this great quilt. We've used our six inch cube today, and not only our six inch cube, but also our six inch companion. So we've got a total of three dies besides our flower that are gonna put this great quilt together. We're gonna use our three and five shapes from our cube, and then our nine, which is our chisel from the companion. Now one of the great things about the cubes are that the pieces are numbered. Those shapes are all numbered and they're numbered the same across all the different sizes of cube. And what that means is that if you have a nine inch cube and want to make the same quilt, you sure can. You can follow the same directions. You're gonna need different yardage and you're gonna have a different finish size quilt, but the numbers of the pieces that you're gonna use are still going to be the three, the five, and the nine. So I think that's a great way to make sure that you're using all of your great cube pieces. Now, we have used the six inch in this one, and what we're gonna talk about today mostly is putting together our rickrack square. So this is what that rickrack square is going to look like. I think it gives us a really fun effect on the quilt. And we're gonna talk about the chisels on here. Now the chisels are what we would call a directional shape. And that means that you have to be sure that you read your directions, something that I'm not always very good about, but you do need to do that with this pattern. And make sure that you are cutting out your chisels so they're facing the right direction. Something like a half square triangle is what we call a non-directional shape. You can cut it off either way and it's gonna be the same. But the chisels with that angle, they are gonna be directional. So when we get to cutting today, we are gonna have to be aware of that. Now for cutting, we're gonna use our Go Big Cutter today. And this is the Go Big Electric. One of the great things about this pattern is that these are actually all dies that would fit in any of our cutters. So you could even use this on a Go Baby. But for right now, we're gonna use the Go Big Electric. And I'm gonna open it up for us so we can get started. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it on its side open it up from there and turn it on. That's as easy as it is. Okay, so I talked a little bit earlier about the directional shapes on the chisel. It's gonna make a difference in how we lay our fabric on our die. For this one, you're gonna to want to always have your fabric right side down. So we're gonna want all of our fabric to be right side down. Because of that, we're not able to do a fan fold on this like we do a lot of our dies. So what I've done is take a width of fabric strip and I have actually cut it in half so that I can have both of my right sides down. And I'm gonna line those up. Now, just like with our other shapes, we want our lengthwise grain to be parallel to our lengthwise blade as it goes through the cutter. I'm gonna line that up, use the mat, now, remember with the cubes, you get your mat inside there for you. So we're gonna put this off to the side. I've got a little extra. My Go Big isn't gonna care a bit about that. And I'm gonna be able to feed this right on through. And it's gonna do all the work for me. I can go away even and, and wait someplace else or go find something else and it's gonna be waiting there for me. So I'm gonna push and slide that mat off and now I've got four of, my, four of my chisels all facing the way that I need them to. So I'm gonna show you the first, um, the way we'd put these box together would be to do two units like we have here with the chisel with our half square triangle on the top. Now this is definitely one of those times that I might use a little uh, design board to lay out my pieces so that I didn't get confused as to how I was laying my fabric out. Because we've got our dog-eared corners on here, 
it's going to line up just perfectly. And I'm just going to double check. Yep, when I open this out, it's going to be the right way. So I'm going to step over to my sewing machine, line it up. I'm actually using a half, a little a quarter inch foot here to make sure I've got a great quarter inch seam allowance on here. Run this through. And I'm going to go ahead and press off to the dark real quick here. And I've got my great chisel block. So you could definitely get these all cut out in no time, put them together, chain piece them together, press them. And then once they were all pressed, I had my little rectangles put together, I'd go ahead and do my squares. And those would line up again just perfectly. We're going to get a great point out of this. I'm going to go back to the sewing machine with my quarter inch on my foot. And, whoops, didn't quite cut. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and press this to one side. If you go ahead and press to one side when you're putting this together, then when you put all of your box together, you'll be able to flatten out that center seam just a little bit easier. There's a lot of bulk anytime you have something like this that has as many seams meeting in the middle. Now, if you look carefully, I didn't do anything special. I didn't even pin, but I lined it up and I've got a perfect point there. And again, these two would go together, these two would go together, put the two halves together, and we've got a rick rack block. Now, we talked about those directional chisels, and I want to talk a little bit about the border on this quilt. I think it's a great treatment. You can see it around the edge. And I think this would be a really fun treatment for any quilt. So we're going to talk a little bit about this. It's going to cut out slightly differently. For the border, you actually need your mirror images. So now is the time that we're going to fan fold. And you would do that by, again, lining up your straight grain parallel to that lengthwise bl gra blade, excuse me, blade on your die, and going ahead and fan folding back and forth. And if I had both of my colors together, I could do them together too. I'm just going to show you how the white would look. And again, that's my three layers. Of course, we can go up to six, and I can put my mat on it, and I'm ready to go ahead, go through the cutter, and put these together. Now, the other, the other die that is used is the number three. That's going to be half square triangles that go in the corners. So really, this is a complex looking quilt, but really easy and fun to put together. We'd love to see your version of this quilt on our inspiration page. And please look for more inspiration for us, not only there, but on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Pinterest. Remember, we at AccuQuilt are here to help you cut time so you can quilt more. <music>